Now we're at Blickling Hall in the upper ante room, uh, which was a room created in the 18th century, and the history of Abraham tapestries have hung here since that time. The tapestries were woven at the Mortlake factory in West London, which was founded in 1619 and survived for almost a century and closed in 1703. The King, King James I, was the patron of the workshop and um, he invited Flemish weavers to England to set up the workshop because he was paying too much money to import tapestries from abroad and he thought he could do um, have a, a cheaper option if he had his own royal manufactory. The designs for these tapestries were taken from cartoons used by the Brussels weavers about a century before and um, were purchased by the Mortlake factory um, in order to produce this uh, series. The borders, however, are different from the original cartoons and um, were designed by Francis Klein, who was the designer of the Mortlake factory. There are eight pieces of tapestry in this set and um, in the 1960s um, they required some major repairs. But at that time, unfortunately, a quick and cheap method of conservation was carried out using adhesive. And this adhesive started to fail um, quite quickly and by the 1980s um, the set required conservation. Uh, there was a group of volunteers who started work at uh, Blickling in 1976 and there was a small workroom here and they started work in the 1980s on one of the smaller pieces of the set depicting the expulsion of Hagar and um, they carried out this work and then since that time um, gradually um, each tapestry has been treated and given a proper um, conservation treatment, the adhesive has been removed and um, the tapestries have been given a stitch support. In 2001 there was a major incident at Blickling when a fire hydrant which was housed in the attics burst pouring uh, gallons of water through the ceiling above the upper ante room and the long gallery next door and um, it um, came down the walls and soaked uh, two of the tapestries. Um, an emergency um, procedures had to be um, put into play. The tapestries were removed from the wall um, but unfortunately um, mould started to grow and the two tapestries in question had to be dealt with quickly and were sent for um, proper cleaning. After cleaning they came back and um, were given some emergency first aid treatment so that the tapestries could then be rehung. And um, the type of um, first aid that we do is using a stitch called laid couching. And you can see an example of this here on the, on the tapestry. Um, this uh, regular rows of couching help to keep the warps in place and prevent stress on the hanging textile and prevent splitting and loss of yarn. And this is now strong enough to hang uh, while it awaits proper full conservation. Full conservation requires more detailed stitching that will last over a much longer period and we can see an example of that in this tapestry of King Abimelet where the missing brown wool has been um, couched in place again this term couching but this is a different form of couching in, in the, it, it takes the form of a sort of spaced darning stitch and we can see that clearly in this area here. Okay. At the studio you saw Rachel undertaking glue removal on the largest piece of tapestry of this set um, and um, this particular tapestry here has undergone that treatment and um, has now been completed, its conservation has been completed. If we look at this area in particular, you'll see that uh, this section, which is now dark brown, was in fact a section that was cut out in the 1960s and repaired with adhesive. Um, 
the adhesive was removed in the same sort of way that, that um, you've seen already. And then during the full conservation, um, we were able to match uh, some fabric to the weave of the tapestry and had this fabric specially woven. It's a ribbed fabric, so it's, it does simulate, and it's woven in wool, so it does simulate the surface texture of the original tapestry. We've dyed this fabric to this dark brown, um, which matches the dark brown background of the border that you can see above. This uh, fabric was then pieced in uh, behind the original material, or behind the original tapestry, and sewn in place, so that from a distance, um, you, your eye will read this as part of the weaving of the tapestry and not a repair. There's another form of um, conservation that we've applied here to this tapestry. And uh, you can see that in the uh, dress of Abraham here, where the silk uh, was lost and a, a square section was removed in the 1960s again and the whole thing glued. Again, you can see the glue has been removed and instead of filling this um, hole up with a dyed fabric, um, we've re-warped across the hole and then couched down uh, with this space darning stitch again, using the colours to try and merge in with the original shading of the weaving. This shading is called hatching, um, introducing one shade into another. Here we've got the darker blue and then the, the lighter blue is in silk and we've tried to simulate this shading in, within our stitching. You can see more of this hatching technique uh, used in the original weaving, um, perhaps more clearly here where you've really got this uh, highlight of silk um, and then you've got the, the darker uh, blue silk being used here and then it gradually goes down into a slight, another darker shade of um, blue wool. Um, so you get this um, rather subtle gradations that go on um, particularly within the sort of depiction of fabrics in tapestry weaving. Unfortunately the losses of silk weft which make up the picture um, expose the underlying warp and you can see that quite clearly in this area uh, where the silk has been lost. Um, and again, our conservation stitching is designed to really try and give an impression of what that original colouring was. Um, and so you can see this space darning in this particular area. We're learning all the time with tapestry conservation and um, with all textile conservation. And we try out some methods and then we try to modify them and improve on them over time. So when we started the adhesive removal on this tapestry, we used a, a particular um, chemical um, that uh, we, we used to try and break down the latex adhesive. Unfortunately, whilst it was successful, um, we, it did affect the cochineal dye in the tapestry, which we then had to um, take action to reverse. So when we um, were, were planning the treatment of the, um, the next tapestry and the adhesive removal, we, we learned to modify that system. So we, this um, evolution of conservation techniques is happening all the time. And we're always being quite self-critical about our work and about the stitching, for example, and how we can improve on that. Mm -hmm.